Hello. All right. So we're on lesson 18. Kiddos, we're in the home stretch. Before you know it, I'll be back in school. So very similar to what we were doing yesterday, but now we're going to have some movement on everything. So see how it says f of x, which is just the fancy y, equals the absolute value of x. g of x equals the f of x uh, minus 3. And then h of x, f of x plus 2. All right. So it says write the formula for g of x. So we're going to have g of x. We're going to be looking at this piece. See where it says f of x minus 3? That means we're in absolute value for our stuff. See how it's parentheses and has both inside? That means both will land inside of this absolute value. So this is what this looks like. And, um, without using f of x notation, we didn't use f of x anymore and we didn't use it over here. Now it says use h of x. So we're going to use h of x equals, and we're looking at this, and it's f of x uh, plus the 2. So h of x equals the absolute value of everything else inside. So now it's not too hard to do this. We're going to use the same concept. We're going to see if we can bring this in a little bit. It's very light. Um, so we're going to be filling in this chart. So this is the same thing. The absolute value of a negative 3, just like yesterday, is 3, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. That column should be easy because everything in absolute value comes out clean. It's how many steps away from 0 a number is. How many steps away is a negative 3? Three? 3. How many steps is a negative 2? Two? 2. So on and so forth. Now, if you recall, this g of x formula, we rewrote it as this. So um, even though you put the f of x minus 3, we're really having g of x equals um, the absolute value of an x minus 3. Okay. And uh, when we do that, you'll see in a moment how how this all all works. Okay. And then this is h of x equals the absolute value of an x plus 2. Now, if it's in the absolute value, this is how it's going to be shifted. Now, remember yesterday's video when it was on the outside of the absolute value. This is like yesterday where we had this minus 2. So we have this, but we shifted it down. Or if we had the plus 2 and we shifted it up, the vector was higher than the one that touched at the 0, 0. This is a shift to the opposite. So normal negative numbers head to the left. Well, this graph actually shifts 3 to the right, whereas this is normally a plus 2. It goes this way. This graph, an absolute value, actually shifts to the left. So we get used to how, uh, how we do that. So now we're going to just plug it in. So this right here, you start to get real good at these. Now, if you do it by hand, you literally are plugging this into the x. Negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. The absolute value of a negative 6 is a 6. But we all know on a calculator, when you go to y equals, okay, my light doesn't, it's not as good as it is if it's in my classroom. Um, so I'm just going to put this right here. We go to math, num, absolute value, just like we did yesterday. And we have um, x minus 3, I think it was, right? x minus 3. And we arrow out of it. And then we can go to second function table. And as you can see, let me put it up to my screen. Not very clear. I'm trying, guys. There. So as you see that, negative 3 is a 6, negative 2 is a 5, negative 1 is a 4. So we have all these numbers right here. So um, as it goes away, it's blurry. As it was up close, it was pretty good. So my calculator says um, for negative 3, it's 6. For negative 2, it's 5. And then we go 4, 3, 2, 1. 
and then zero. And now we can go, um, we can just see what it looks like. It's going to look like this. See how, let me get a, see how, remember before the graph yesterday was up a two, down a couple. This is, a, this was a negative three. And instead of shifting over to the negative three this way, it's going over to the negative, it's a, going to the positive three. So whatever is in absolute value just had the other direction. All right, so then we can plot that. Probably in the next page is my guess, that'll be a plot. So I'm just gonna refocus because now we're farther away. Yeah, so we're gonna be plotting on the next page. So I'm gonna take this out and instead of going through all the details and changing everything up, we can just go in and re-put that into it just by changing the numbers arrowing out this is what our thing is going to look like remember it's a plus two so now we're heading over to the negative two to where we start and for points this would be second function table and in place of our negative three we would have a one then a zero one a two three a four and a five so let me refocus here and we write our points in so and then literally all you have to do is plug in the equation and fill in the chart kind of an easy process all right so now that we did that part now we're going to have this for the other page unfortunately the graph's on the back and so we gotta remember what we had for points so that we can plot them so this right here is what we're going to label our line okay so um we have to take our points and we're labeling our graph okay so our first graph is just our first one so we're going to go negative one negative two negative three and then up three so one two three negative two up two one zero one two three so on and so forth and we can keep going up and over and that's going to be our vector on the very first graph and like i said you just make it go and this is going to be y equals f of x okay and um i don't know yeah we just we can just label them as they are at the top of the page all right, so that's the first one. Then um, the next one that we're going to graph is the g of x. So the g of x <coughs> is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, but up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 2, 5. So negative 2, 5. Negative 1, 4. 0, 3. Remember how it was minus 3? Um, so, um, what do you want to call it? We would be, we're going to be at the plus 3, I believe. Um, so, hold on one second. Mm, let me see. Oh, I think I went backwards. I went backwards. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, welcome to my brain. Welcome to my brain. All right. So we do the, um, the one that's in the absolute value. So we go negative 3 to the 6. I think I had that. Negative 3 to the positive 6. 0 up 3. Yeah, I had that correct. Oh, yes. So back to where I, I was right, kiddos. I was second guessing myself. Shouldn't do that. It's not good. All right. So then I had zero, three, and then I had one, two. So over to the one up two, I'm still, I'm still not done vectoring yet. And then I have one, two, one, and then I have three, zero, one, two, three, up none. That's just giving me my, my, that part of my vector 
okay so then i can still keep going um so let me get some more numbers in my calculator so the cool thing is is that you can you can kind of keep going in your calculator and uh kind of figure out what you got to do to find more points so you just scroll on your calculator so i need like five two over oops i need the four one so over to the one two four up one there we go over to the five up two over to the six up three and there we go there's our vector there so we have y equals f of x minus three and that was over the one the two the three where this normally looks like it go negative but actually is going that way this one's going to be vectoring over here okay so just going back into my calculator just to because this was the last one we plotted um and let's see that's the plus two we got second function table all right so then we can start at the negative three so negative one negative two negative three positive one negative two zero negative two zero negative one one oh this one's going to go like this and then zero two so over zero up two so this is like doing this and this one's going to go up one over one up one over one and this one's just going to vector like that and we have y equals f of x plus two and then you graph all that that's a lot of work sometimes all right so now letter e you still will be able to see your graph i just can't see mine but that's okay <clears throat> letter e says how does the graph of the first one relate to the graph of the other one it's actually from this one to the this one from here to here and all it is is it's going sideways so it's being translated so if you look at the two pictures from here to here it's going over three jumps so in other words it's translating so it's translated three units to the right whereas this to the one we just had would be translated so translated two units to the left how does the graph of this one and this one differ yesterday's um that one so this one is translated three units down where this one is translated three to the right so when they ask you for direction that's what they're talking about all right and then um so basically that's all we have to worry about there we don't really need this one right here because these are the more of the ones you're going to see on the regents exam so i'm just going to flip my page okay so on the next page it says a translation five units write five units so it's um i guess it doesn't really matter what we use so we could use a of x since it's an a we'll just use a of x is translated and that would be x minus five because going to the right looks like a positive naturally so we have to make it look negative so this one where it says uh a translation down three units we could go b of x and we could say equals the absolute value of an x and we literally have a down three because downs and ups are outside the absolute value and they are what they are all right so a vertical scaling 
that's a vertical stretch with a scale factor of five. So a vertical stretch means it's getting narrower, okay? So a stretch means we're getting a whole number on the outside. So this is maybe like C of X, and the stretch means it's on the outside of the absolute value like that, okay? Now, a translation left four units, so say we have D of X, a translation X, and if left is a negative four, we want to put on a plus four because we don't want to go left, we want to go the opposite. And then our last piece, a vertical scaling of a shrink. So a shrink's going on the outside also. So let's say, oh, we can go E of X. It sounds weird, but E of X equals, and we have a third on the outside of the absolute value of an X. Okay, so now I'm going to flip my page. All right, so when we're looking at the top, we have to write a formula based on this. This tells us everything right here. If it's shifted over to the left six, that means inside that absolute value is not going to be a minus six. It's going to be a plus six inside the absolute value. So see how this next vector is facing downward. Right away, that means it's negative. Okay. And um, see, it's not a very wide vector. And we have to kind of figure out what's going on here um, so we can check what's happening. So from here to here, see this? We, have to, we can see the slope because we don't really know what number is going to be here. And how do we know how wide, how, like how uh, long, how much of a, uh, what was the word that they use? Uh, a stretch. So how much of a stretch? So we're going to put a stretch there. So that's a stretch until we check the scale. And that's a down 2 over 1. So a down 2 over 1 means it's a negative 2 like that. And we can keep checking it down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. So we know that the slope of this is a negative 2, which is helping us know what stretch we're having. <clears throat> All right. So then our last piece on this page um, is kind of a weird one because we are heading to the positive. So we know that we're going to have an X plus, sorry, an X minus because we're heading to the positive. So we're going to have an X minus and we kind of have to figure out where it falls. So we got one, two, three, but it's, it's over three, zero, and we don't really know. So there's a few different ways we can figure uh, this out. But the easiest way to do this, um, oh, let's see. I think we can tell by where it's landing. So it's like one and a little bit more. Actually, you know what? This one isn't going to actually be on the test. This is a three over two, which is a one and a half. Um, but I don't know why we marked this one. We really need to mark D on this. So, oh, I did mark D. D is what I wanted to do. So D is what you're going to see usually on your test. Um, so like D, we know that this is a shift up. So that's a plus four on the outside of the absolute value. And it's just an X on the inside because normally it is. Oh, this one. This one's a shrink. This is the one I was kind of looking at. So it's a shrink. So we have to look to see. And this is an up one over one, two, three, four. So that's a one fourth X like that. Absolute value of an X. So this means it's widening, getting wide, really, really wide. But we can find the slope out by just seeing how far. So it's like up one over four, up one over four. So that's how we know. When it doesn't look normal and it's something stretched or it looks leaner, then there's a number is going to be on the outside of that. Okay. Um, all right. So this next one, we are going to talk about how it's going to become both. Okay. So we're, we're looking at this and remember this one's like the ones that are at dead center. That's usually what these, this represents. It touches at zero, zero. And now we have two things going on. We have a two units to the left and four units down. 
So right off the bat, we have four units down. Okay, so we have a y equals, because we know we have an f of x. So um, a y equals, we're going to have something here. And if it's two units to the left, left is negative. So we don't want to have a negative. We want to have a positive. We want to have an x plus 2, and then it's a negative 4. So you got to remember, if it says two units to the left, that's heading negative. That means we end up positive, And the up or down is truly negative or positive. So a translation, two and a half units right, one unit up um, on, on this particular one. And well, this has options um, on how we want to do this. So, um, oh, let's see. Do, 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 do. So we go two and a half units to the right. So that means we're going to be negative 2.5 inside with an x with me on that and then we have our y equals and one unit up just means we can put a plus one vertical scaling factor of a half so we have y equals we have the scale factor of a half okay and then a translation three units to the right right means po right's positive so we don't want to go positive we want to go negative so we have the vertical scaling. So that means it's a shrink. So it's going to get wider like the last one we did up above. And then instead of three units to the right, which is a plus three, we want to go the other way to get that negative three. Okay. So now we'll flip our page. And D, at the very, very top of this page, um, a, let's see, a translation five units right. So we have a five units, um, let's see, five units to the right. So that's right is positive. So we need a negative five like that. Um, so we have y equals <clears throat> and a vertical scaling reflecting across the exit vertical scale factor of a negative two. That means it's getting narrow, but not only is it narrow, it says a negative two. So that means this one would be like five units to the right. So it'd be over to the right like this. And it'd be like, kind of like that. All right. So just so you have an idea of what that would look like. All right, so the ones underneath it. Now we have to take it from the picture and try to figure out the formula that depicts the graph. Okay, well, the first things first is we know it's positive and it's got a down motion and it's down four and it's shifted over to the negative two, okay? So if it's over to the negative 2, that means it started out as a plus 2, and it's still down 4. So it's at the negative 2, so we have to put in the opposite. So here, it's at 4, it's at the 5, positive 5. So that means originally it was a negative 5. And then if you notice, it's 2 down. So then we have 2 down. Okay. All right. C. Oh, we have an upside down one right off the bat. Boom. That's a negative. And it's um, over to the negative four. So that means it has to be a positive four on the inside. So you just got to get used to it. It's, it's the opposite of what you see if it's inside. The up and down are exactly what they are. All right, and then I think we got one more of these on a different page. Yep, we do. And we have this one. Okay, so now we got a couple things going. It looks like it's up to the three. So we got an up three no matter what, like that. It's positive. Um, and it shifted over to the neg positive three. So that means if it's over in the positives, it's going to start with the negative. So that's how we do that. It's kind of interesting. You have to see if it went up or down and that's at the back. 
and then you have to see how far over it is. And if it's over to the positive, you write a negative. If it was over to the negative, you'd write a positive. Um, let me see else. Is there anything else? Okay, and that's all that I got for you for this video. I heart math still. Have a good day, guys. I hope you're surviving.